All right, so today we're going to do multiplying decimals and whole numbers. There are a couple of things that we want to remember when we're talking about multiplying with a whole number. Where does the decimal go in a whole number? Well, if you remember from when we did decimals earlier this year, the decimal is always going to go right behind the whole number. So we have a problem here. 3 and 46 hundredths times 7. We're going to put that decimal right there. Now there's a difference between multiplying decimals and adding and subtracting. See if you can jog your memory. Do you remember what we do when we add and subtract decimals? Hopefully you were thinking we should line them up. It's different when we multiply. If we're going to multiply a decimal, we are not going to line up the decimal points. So let's do this together. The first step we need to do is just set up the problem as if there are no decimal points. So if I'm going to write this problem out, it's going to look like this. 3 and 46 hundredths times 7. Because what I've done is I've lined these up by the digit going all the way to the right, just like we would if this were the number 346 times 7. I'm just pretending like the decimal point doesn't exist at all. Now, for step number 2, I'm just going to solve the problem as if there are no decimal points. Solve the problem as if there are no decimal points. So let's do that. Let's use our skills of multiplication and do it. 6 times 7 gives me 42. 4 times 7 is 28 plus 4 more is 32. Now I have 7 times 3 is 21 plus 3 gives me 24. Now I'm not done yet. Obviously, our answer is not going to be 2,422. That wouldn't make sense for having a decimal there. The last step we need to do is count the decimal places in the problem. The same number of decimal places are going to be moved in our answer. Let me show you what that will look like. We're going to copy the same steps that we've done for step one and two. Three and 46 hundredths times seven. When I did that multiplication, I got two, four, two, two. Here's the deal. Now I need to count the number of decimal places that it moved in my problem. For example, I look at the digits that are to the right of the decimal place. How many times did I underline those digits? Well, I had two of them. So I'm going to put a two off to the side and I'm going to circle it. Were there any places to the right of the decimal for the number seven? There weren't. So I don't have to write anything. You could write a zero because it would remind you that it didn't move any places. Here's what we do now. To find how many decimal places I'm going to write in my answer, I add up my two plus my zero. I get two. My answer is going to move two decimal places where I will then put my decimal point. This is the process you should follow anytime you're multiplying a decimal with a whole number. Go ahead and take a second, pause the video, and try doing the exit slip at the bottom on your own. If you don't have a paper version in front of you, find a scrap sheet of paper and copy the problem three times six and five hundredths. Pause the video and then come back and I'll show you how to find the answer. All right, let's see how you did. So I'm going to start by actually putting six and five hundredths on the top. Here's why. It has more digits. And when we've learned about multiplying large numbers, we always want the one that has the most digits on the top. 
And so since we know the commutative property and it, we can flip those numbers around, six and five hundredths goes on top. My three goes underneath. And notice I lined them up by the digit, not by the decimal place. Step number two tells us that we just multiply like normal. So I'm going to get 15. I have zero times three is zero plus one is one. Now I have six times three is 18. But if you remember, I'm still not finished yet. We need to count over how many decimal places does it move? Well, in the first factor, it moved twice. Because I have a whole number, it's not going to move at all, which means how many times should it move in my answer? Twice. One, two, decimal. My final answer should be 18 and 15 hundredths. Check your work. See how you did. How comfortable do you feel? Message your teacher on Canvas if you have any questions.